So this question asks, to find the density of a spherical ball, its mass is measured to be this, and its diameter is measured to be this. Oh, so it's giving number and the uncertainty. Okay. <laughs> what is the ball's density and its absolute uncertainty? Okay. So uh, density, I think uh, if you know the right geometry formulas, it's uh, easy. I, have, I happen to have these formulas memorized, so let me just uh, write them down. Um, the, so for density, mass over volume, I need to know the volume of a sphere. And I happen to have a formula for volume of sphere memorized. It's uh, 4 thirds pi r cubed. So the question gives uh, parameters as a diameter. So let me re rewrite this in terms of diameter. So in terms of diameter, it's going to be 4 thirds pi d over 2, giving me radius cubed. That's it. So plugging in numbers, I think that's pretty fairly easy. Um, let me do this in Ulfram Alpha, because it'll, um, yeah, it'll make it easier for me to, um, for, for me to uh, plug in numbers, change things where I need to change. Uh, in the future, I want to show an illustration of Sage Math um, for more complicated expressions. Um, for now, let me use Ulfram Alpha. So I'm given the mass. I'm going to use the best value given, 41.31. Um, and I need to divide it by the volume of the sphere. That's going to be 4 thirds times pi times the diameter, 3.43 uh, divided by 2 cubed. And let me actually put in the units here as well. One of the reasons I like Ulfram Alpha is it's uh, unit aware. So if the question had done this horrible thing of giving you grams and centimeters and SQ in units of kilograms per cubic meter, then Wolfram Alpha can actually um, do the unit conversion for you. It's a, a labor-saving device. So uh, in this case, it doesn't matter because we are using the same set of units. So it says the, uh, and this is the unit conversion I mean. So it's giving 1.955 gram per cubic centimeter. And I, I can imagine a lot of people getting stuck in this uh, second part. How do you calculate the uncertainty? Because if you simply try to put in these values, more, uh, more likely than not, it won't be graded as correct. Um, you actually have to go through a calculation to get that. And um, there's a couple different ways to do it. Um, let me give you the way that's uh, most uh, conceptually the simplest. And then I will give you a second method that um, that once that is more sophisticated, but in terms of running the formulas, is actually easier. So the conceptually the simplest way is to simply calculate well what is going to be my maximum density within this um, uh, uh, within this uncertainty. So or uh, this doesn't have to be maximum; it can also be mean. Just to pick one, one direction or the other, and then choose your parameters consistent with either maximizing or minimizing this uh, particular value, particular calculated value. So for mass, what I have to enter is going to be the largest possible mass within the uncertainty. So it'll be 41.31 plus 0 0.01 gram. That's going to be my mass. And for my volume, so I'm just going to leave everything else as formula. And when I plug in the diameter, so if I want to maximize this, I want the denominator to be minimized. So I'm going to put in 3.43 minus 0 0.02 centimeter for the diameter. All of that divided by 2 cubed. So this is the number I want to calculate. That will give me the maximum estimated density, and I can go from there to figure out, OK, what's, um, what's my uncertainty in the calculated uh, density? So let me put in uh, for the mass, that's going to be plus 0 0.01. For the diameter, it's going to be this, minus 0 0.02. Everything else doesn't need to change. Calculating, and I get 1.990. Okay, so 
Um, for the uncertainty there, what I would need is, um, so this is the difference from the maximum possible to the average. So this subtracting what I calculated before, 1.955555 gram per cubic centimeter. So when it does the calculation, make sure it interpreted your input correctly. Then the answer here is 0 0.035. Um, so 0 0.035 35, uh, gram per cubic centimeter. Let's plug that in and see if uh, um, it says that's correct. So um, 1.955 as the best estimate and 0 0.035 as the uncertainty on that. So yeah, it says that's correct. And that's uh, you know good enough for most of the things we do. Um, in fact, our upcoming lab is exactly on that, errors and uncertainty. And this uh, approach is what I would recommend in most circumstances. Now, suppose you want more <laughs> sophisticated approach. Uh, there's a calculus approach that can actually simplify the formula quite a bit. Because here, it, it, in the end, it's kind of messy. It involves a lot of plugging in numbers. And there's a way to um, do it where it, uh, um, <laughs> it's simpler. <laughs> uh, and it, I guess uh, this will be familiar to you if you've um, taken Math 3C. So I'm using the idea that's uh, similar to what's going to be called the total derivative. There's uh, some changes that I will make uh, to reflect the fact that this is dealing with uncertainty and not other things. Um, but so what it is this? So I have a row, which is a function of two parameter, the mass and the diameter. And any uncertainty in row is going to be uh, dependent on the uncertainties of, of the um, uncertainties of the mass and the diameter. And the way to express that is the, the way to propagate that error is to say this un total uncertainty in the, the density, it comes from the uncertainty in mass. And the way you see the influence of the uncertainty of mass into the uncertainty of density is you take the expression for density, so partial derivative of rho with respect to mass as a variable, kind of, Multiply that with the uncertainty of mass. You can check within this expression that it's a dimensionally consistent. The unit of these two things cancel out, and I get unit of density. Uh, now, because this is an expression with the two parameters, a function of two, two variables, uh, you also have to consider the, the influence of the error on the diameter. So you have to add that in as well. So to do that, you do the same thing. Take the derivative of uh, density with respect to diameter and multiply that to the uncertainty of the diameter. Um, now, if you simply add them, that won't quite work because with these, um, with these random errors, um, one you don't want these two errors going in different directions to just entirely cancel out. So uh, the long explanation cuts short. <laughs> what you have to do is you have to add them in quadrature. You have to add them, add the squares of them, and then take the square root. If you've um, seen the formula for standard deviation, uh, this might remind you of some of that, which is perfectly fine because the procedures you go through comes from the same idea. So this is the formula for calculating the, this error. Now, you can see for here, it's actually super complicated. Uh, do I want to do it? Let's do it. I think it's going to just take another... Um, five minutes or so, and I think we have time to do it. So um, so I, I need the derivatives of this density. So let me write out the density as a function of mass and the diameter, 4 thirds pi d over 2 cubed. So I need its derivative, where here it's going to be uh, 1 over 4 thirds pi d over 2 cubed. Good. And I also need a uh, derivative of density with respect to d. I'm going to have to use chain rule 
um, it'll be a great opportunity to review the chain rule. So I'm taking the derivative of the outside, um, which would give me uh, minus 3m over 4 thirds pi t over 2, 3. Um, that outside uh, through here, like treating this as an internal thing. And then I have to take the derivative of the inside, which is derivative of d over 2. Oh, wait, sorry, that's not 3. That should be 4. That's the power rule. And then taking the derivative of the inside, I'm still using power rule. It just gives me that vector of 1 half. One half. So that's the formula for uh, this derivative of density with respect to d. Um, and I think I have everything I need to just plug the rest of the stuff into Wolfram Alpha. The expansion is going to look really messy, but uh, that's why I recommended doing it the other way. It's conceptually simpler for something as simple as this, where you know you have to do this only once. Um, it, it's not worth the trouble of aggravation of entering all this formula. So uh, I'm going to need a square root on the outside eventually. And on the inside, I'm going to have two terms that are being squared. So this first term that's being squared, that I'll have um, 1 over 4 thirds pi times uh, d, which is 3.43 um, divided by 2 squared. And I think I'm going to skip the, wait, yes, no, sorry, not squared to the third power. Yeah, and actually I, I shouldn't skip the unit because uh, it's going to reveal if I made any mistakes. Um, okay, so that's the derivative. Now I have to multiply that with the uncertainty in mass, 0 0.01 gram. Uh, wait, I think I skipped something. Yeah, it should have been... So okay, I have this. I need to close this parenthesis here. That's the derivative. Multiply to that, and then square the whole thing there. Good. That's the this first term, and now this second term I need to put in uh, minus three times the mass, forty-one point three one gram, divided by four thirds times pi times a d, which is three point four three centimeter, divided by two to the fourth power. Um, leave that alone. Um, and I think I already have this closing. Okay, and before that I need to do times one half. So that's the whole this derivative expression. Uh, and I don't worry about the minus sign because squaring will get rid of that. Multiply this with the uncertainty in diameter. That's uh, 0 0.02 centimeter. Okay. And all of that gets squared. Okay, I think that's the whole expression. Uh, let's press enter and make sure the units come out right. Okay, units come out right and I get, okay, 0 0.034. Pretty close. So this formula uses a calculus assumption which is uh, valid when the errors are relatively small. These are relatively small, which is why this is within like, uh, like 3% of the other value. Now, 0 0.034, the system might grade that as wrong. <laughs> Let's give that a try. 0 0.034. Um, ah, it graded as correct. All right, the programmer must have put in enough tolerance for that. So, uh, so that's another way to do it. Now, if you have to uh, calculate a whole bunch of different values of propagate uncertainty for potentially different values of uncertainty, then you know this formula is great. It's easy to pl uh, program into a, a calculator like Excel or other programming language and use it. So um, this is something that you might use in a kind of research setting where you have to do a, a lot of error propagation. But for a lot of things we'll do in this class, what I will say is that the first method I showed you, the one I could do super quickly without taking any derivatives, that's what I recommend.